Wellbeing teams are a new way to deliver home care. They are small, self-managed neighbourhood teams inspired by Bertsorg. And they can work both with self-funders or people funded with a personal budget, for example, through an ISF. Let's look at what this would mean for Norma. So at the very first meeting, Claire, the Link Wellbeing Worker, meets Norma to really find out what matters to her. The relationships that matter to her, the places that matter to her, the small things that matter to her as well. They also look at Norma's outcomes and priorities. And this involves looking at what's working and not working for Norma and establishing her priorities. Then they explore different ideas for designing her service together. We use something called a support sequence that means we start off by thinking about self-care, then where can assistive technology help, what the role of family, friends or community could be, and this is where we introduce community circles, and then the role of the well-being workers. This gets put into a weekly plan. Norma is supported to choose her own team by two different means, either sharing one-page profiles or one-minute films. And at the end of that meeting, and of course that might take a couple of meetings, then Norma's one-page profile, her team profile and her care and support plan and contract are then shared with Norma to confirm their agreement. Norma's service will then start, and what's really different here is Claire does not hand over the service to someone else. Claire then works with the team directly and is part of Norma's team too. At the six-week review, we check up on the actions and also look at what's working and not working from Norma's perspective and the team's perspective as well, and update the information we have. We also ask another question here, if I could, I would to see what else Norma might be interested in doing in relation to feeling like she has a meaningful life and meaningful days. And of course, it's unlikely that it'd be possible to achieve that just through existing services. So this is where we really introduce community circles and the community circle connector is there to explore with Norma what a circle could mean for her and to start to put that together. So community circle involves friends and family and community members around a clear purpose that the person identifies, facilitated by a volunteer facilitator. So then the community circle will start, and six months later, there's a more formal person-centred review, where again we check actions, update what's working and not working, and this brings together both the team supporting Norma, the wellbeing team members, and the community circle as well. Information from the six-month review also informs working together for change, which is a co-produced process where Norma's information goes to inform the direction of the team and the service overall. Now, this would look exactly the same if we're providing the service to Joan with an individual service fund. The difference would be that the social worker would have identified Joan's outcomes and her indicative allocation, and Claire and Joan would build on those outcomes and establish what other priorities Joan would have to design the service together. So well-being teams have different conversations with people about what really matters to them. They're rooted in co-production, so people design their service together and even choose their team, as well as having a way of contributing to the direction of the service and the team through working together for change. The other difference is the use of the support sequence, which is thinking about self-care first, assistive technology, the roles of friends, family and community, as well as thinking about the outcomes for each well-being worker's visit. So well-being teams deliver a flexible, person-centred service that's focused on outcomes, not hours.